Okay. What's your? So, um, if you guys remember last class period, what we talked about was looking at these formulas, right? Uh, for an ellipse. And if you guys remember, when we're not dealing with any circle, because this is not a circle, we're not looking into r squared because our coefficients are not the same. So for our two equation for an ellipse, we have to have it equal to 1, right? So that's the first thing we want to make sure is we have our equation of our ellipse equal to 1. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to divide by 36 on both sides. Therefore, I have x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. 4 over 36 is 1 ninth. 9 over 36 is 1 fourth. Does everybody see how I got the 4 and the 9 with simplifying? No? Well, 4 over 36 is equal to 1 over 9. 4 over 36 is the same thing as 1 ninth. But I don't need to write the 1 there. I can just take that away. OK? So now, now that we have it into our formats, we can identify our A and our B. And if you guys remember what I displayed up there, is, or at least what I, um, I displayed up there is, it's really important to know where A and your B are, because A is the distance from your center to your uh, vertices, which lie on your major axis. So anyways, there's another relationship. Does anybody remember what was larger, A or B, in this case? Oh, A was always larger for an ellipse, right? So therefore, A squared in this case has to be 9. nine. So we'll just write that out there. A squared equals 9. B squared equals 4. four. A equals plus or minus 3, and B equals plus or minus 2. Um, can we also find the center here fairly s easily? Yeah, the center is going to be just 0, 0, right? Because if you look at the formula, it's x minus h, x minus k. We're not subtracting things, so your zero's at, center is at 0, 0. Now, Logan, what I would recommend doing when you're doing these problems, I'm going to ask you to identify the center, the vertices, the covertices, and the foci, uh, as well as graph it. So what I'd recommend doing is sketch your graph here. So we have a center at 0, 0, and I'd label that. Um, now, the next thing is we, we know that we have a major axis and a, a minor axis. And we know that a squared is 9 and b squared is 4. But what does that tell us about our major and our minor axis? Does anybody remember? Can we determine? Because we have two of them. We either have a major axis that's horizontal or a major axis that's vertical. Does anybody remember how we determined that from last class period? Rowan, do you remember? No? Dari, you remember? Yeah. What is it? Okay. I guess I guess my question is how do you how do we know if the major axis is horizontal or vertical? Well, A is always larger. A is always greater than B for an ellipse. The X. Hold on. Do you remember? Or do you want him to finish? Yep. So if you remember what we looked at on the computer screen, if you guys remember what we looked at on the computer screen, when, when the A squared, the larger term was under X, that means our, our major axis was vertical, or I'm sorry, horizontal. And when our A squared was under the Y, that means our major axis was vertical. Basically, the ellipse was stretched vertically or horizontally. So that's really important because here, this Y axis in this case, I'm going to call is my major axis. And my X axis in this case is going to be my minor axis. It's the other way around. That is your minor, and that is your major. The reason, again, why that's the major is because the a squared is under the x, and x is going left and right, right? Now, this is helpful because once we know, what's on the, once we know where the major axis is, if it's horizontal or vertical, um, now we can determine where the vertices are because the vertices is a distance of a. So here's my center. a is 3. Well. I'm going to go 3 on the major axis. Since the major axis is horizontal, I'm going to go over 3 and to the left 3. Those are my two vertices, because those vertices are on the major axis. So I'll say my vertices are going to be plus or minus 3 comma 0. You can write them as 3 comma 0 and negative comma 0. Perfectly fine with me. Um, however, I would just. Uh, 
you can leave it with plus or minus is fine with me as well. Uh, the covertices are on the minor axis, and those have a distance of b. So b is 2. So we're going to go up 2 and down 2. So that is going to be at 0, comma, plus or minus 2. And then last but not least, guys, we need to find our foci. And our foci is a value of c, which we know that c squared equals a squared minus b squared. c squared equals 9 minus 4. c squared equals 5 root root c equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Now, here's where, again, knowing the major axis is so important, because the major, the foci lie on the major or the minor axis? Major axis, right? So they have to be going left and right. That means your foci are going to be plus or minus the square root of 5, comma, 0. Now, if I was going to ask you to graph them, which I probably will, we need to put this on the, on the mark here. And some of you might say, well, I don't know what square root of 5 is. You can plug in your calculator, but let's save ourselves some trouble. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 5 is somewhere in between 4 and 9. Everybody agree with me? So the square root of 5 is somewhere in between 2 and 3. Yes? That's about as detailed as you guys need to be. So my foci is somewhere between 2 and 3 and left 2 and 3. And then we just connect. And there's my nice little beautiful ellipse. Okay. Okay. If you think you're so smart. <laughs>